Hi, I'm Mark Coniglio, the creator of Isadora. This is tutorial 9. Here we're going to learn how to use the sound input coming into the computer as a way of interactively manipulating parameters inside of Isadora. So in the last tutorial we learned how to bring the live feed, the imagery, in from the camera. And in this tutorial we're going to do the same with sound, except that we're not going to use the sound as a, something we can process, but instead as a sensory input. So I want you to start by going to the input menu and choosing live capture settings. We're going to focus now on the area labeled sound input in the live capture settings window. And like before with the video, we have a device pop up. This shows us all of the audio devices that are connected to the system that we can read in as part of our patch. And so I'm going to choose built in microphone. Now, this laptop happens to have a built-in microphone uh, here that we can just speak and pick that up. Some laptops don't have that. You may have a line input, and then you have to hook up some other external device if you want to use your voice as an input into the system. In any case, I'm going to now start live capture. I'm going to press that button, and when I do, you're going to see that there's a little graph down here. Uh, VU meters, if you will, that when I speak, they're moving around. That's showing us that we have a good level. Also, the video input is still happening because we had that set up from the previous tutorial. Before I started this, I actually set the gain input to the right of the device to plus 12 dB. It was actually a little soft before. I'll show you that now. Here's where it's set to zero. You can see the little green uh, VU meters aren't moving very much at all. It's too soft really to work with. So you can use this gain input, setting it to a higher level if it's too soft or to a lower level if it's too loud to get a good range of movement in those VU meters. So once you have that configured, now we can actually put this into use. So what I thought I'd do is take the video example we had from the previous patch where we used the dots actor, but use the sound to manipulate it. So to start with, we need a way to get the information about the sound into the patch and that's done using the sound level watcher. Take a look at the numbers here, left level and right level. If I'm silent for a moment, they'll go down almost to zero. But as soon as I speak, you see them ranging. And if I get quite loud, it went all the way up to 100. So you can see that this is just really reporting the numbers that are the kind of curve of the amplitude of my voice. So those are just a number like anything we've seen before, like the envelope generator, the wave generator, and we can use that to manipulate parameters in Isadora. Again, to work with the live video, I'm going to get the video in watcher, the dots actor, and a projector. And I'm going to hook those together. And I'm going to say output for stage preview so we get a small version of the stage to look at. I'm going to turn the color on. And now if I hold my hand up in front of the camera, you see the hand being processed by the dots effect. The dot size right now is 4. But now what I'm going to do is take the left level output of the sound level watcher and connect that into the dot size. See, now, as I speak, the volume of my voice is adjusting the size of the dots. Now, I'm not so happy with how small it's getting. I'll take a look at that. Those dots are a little bit too small. And to do that, we're going to change the scaling on that input because we don't really want it to go all the way to zero. We want it to stay a little bit higher than that. So I click on the word dot size, and let's set the scale min to 4. That way, the dot size will never go below 4 when I'm quiet. Okay? So now we have this great little patch where the volume of my voice is reacting or controlling the size of the dots. And you can see it's very, very instantaneous. Ba, 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 ba. Really, really fantastically quick. So this is a really nice way of using um, the audio in your computer to manipulate some of the parameters. One thing that's important here for the left level and right level are these two inputs marked left min level and right min level. Sometimes you're in a place, maybe there's an air conditioner running or some sound in the space and you want to ignore that. If you raise these levels, then it will cancel out anything below that. So just as an example, I'm going to set both of those to five. 
And notice now when I'm silent, before there was like a little bit above zero, like 0.1 or something. Now when I'm silent, the left level and the right level really go to completely to zero. Okay, so if you have like some ambient noise or something that's always there that you want to ignore, raise the left level, the min minimum levels, the left min level or the right min level. That's what those are used for. So one thing that we can get out of the sound level watcher is a continuous control. Again, very much like the envelope generator or the wave generator. But we can also use the sound level watcher to get a trigger so that when we make a loud sound, we can make something happen. So to show you how to do that, I'm going to actually bring into this scene an envelope generator that we can trigger. Okay. And I'm going to connect that to the left trig in output. Now, once I've done that, you can see that it's actually going sometimes, but that's because we haven't properly adjusted this, these two inputs the left trig level and the right trig level. What this is saying is, this is a threshold. If the volume goes above whatever you set there, let's say 50%, 60%, then it's going to send a trigger out to the other side. So I'm going to set the left trig level to 60. So now you'll notice that if I don't speak too often, if we look at the envelope generator, I should say too loudly, nothing happens. But if I make a loud sound, then Every time I do that, I trigger the envelope generator, right? So now we have a way of using a very loud sound to make a trigger an event. And we're going to use that uh, to be able to make a little percussion instrument that will let us see the video every time we make a louder sound. So to make that totally clear for a moment, I'm going to take the bypass input of the dots actor and turn that on. That bypasses the dots actor, so now you're just seeing the unaffected image. If I now hook the envelope generator to the intensity input of the projector and I make a louder sound, bah, you see that it goes from 0 to 100 brightness over one second. But to get that feeling of a percussion instrument, I really wanted to go the other way. I want it to come on and quickly fade out. So we have to change the envelope generator settings. I'm going to go to value 0 and make that 100. We want it to start bright. I'm going to change value 1 to zero because we want it to end in black. And then I'm going to set the rate to 0.25, which is a quarter of a second, quite quick, yeah? So now, whenever I make that loud sound, bang, ba, 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 ba. And there you see my hand appearing, ba, in the stage. If now I turn the dots actor back on, I re-enable it by turning the bypass input off, and I hold up my hand, ba. Ba 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 ba. Now you can see the dots appearing only when I make that loud sound. A couple things worth mentioning. You'll notice that everything has a left and a right input on the sound level watcher, and that's because, in fact, if you feed it a stereo signal, you can you can trigger things independently. The left channel is completely separate than the right channel, so. Keep that in mind. In this case, since we're using the built-in microphone, it's monophonic, so we can't actually tell the difference between left and right. But in one uh, piece that I saw an Isadora user do, they actually fed it in from a mixing console where they could pan one instrument all the way to the left and pan the other instrument all the way to the right. So each performer could independently trigger events or control things using those left and right channels. So the sound level watcher is a very powerful tool that allows you to take any kind of sound input and use it to either do a continuous control manipulation of any numeric parameter inside of Isadora or to trigger events based on a loud sound. And one thing to do is to let your imagination run a little bit wild with this because there are many opportunities of ways you can hook up audio devices to control this. It could be the obvious, a microphone on an instrument or something like this, but also little piezo sensors that act as microphones can be taped to walls and you can tap the walls and this can also be picked up so let your mind be open to the possibilities of how you might use this sound level watcher to create simple and easy ways to trigger and manipulate things inside of Isadora.